heart of the Bicol region, Legazpi, is situated on the footsteps of the iconic, awe-inspiring Mayon volcano. This vibrant city is the nucleus for adventure within its natural wonders. With just above 200,000 people, this capital is the largest city in Bicol, a thriving epicenter for tourism, education, health services, commerce, and transportation. It was named after the conquistador Miguel Lopez Legazpi, who officially annexed the Philippines to the Spanish Empire in 1565. From Manila, one can take a short flight to Daraga Airport before taking a taxi to get to Legazpi. However, we were in San Andres, so our journey was quite different. We first took a three-hour ferry from Calolbon to the port town of Tobacco. There are four trips daily from San Andres to Tobacco, the earliest departing at 6.30 a.m. and the last one at 2 p.m. An ordinary fare on the outside deck is 300 pesos, while seats inside with air conditioning is 400 per person. There are no assigned seating. It is first come, first serve basis. For more information, visit municipalityofsanandres.gov.ph or visit the link in the description below. The ride was quite uneventful for the most part. However, a couple of the front AC units stopped working about three-fourths of the way there. It was warm at certain parts of the room, but luckily, there were still two large units working at the back. Once we arrived in Tobacco, we hailed a trike to take us to the bus stop. From there, we took an hour and a half bus ride to Legazpi before picking up our rental. The rental company I booked from is Car for Rent Albi. It is walking distance from the bus station in Legazpi, which made it convenient. But you can also have your rental delivered to you and return it anywhere within the province. The rental building is small and unassuming. You can miss it if you don't know what you're looking for. My rental experience was good overall. However, I did book an SUV about three months in advance, and when I got there, the vehicle was not available as it was due for maintenance. I would assume that they forgot about my booking, which wasn't great, and they only had a sedan available at the time. It wasn't a big deal, since it was only going to be my mum, myself, and our relative. But if you are coming with a bigger family, and you do book in advance, make sure to contact them as your date of arrival nears. That way, they remember your booking, in case they forget. Besides that, the pick-up and drop-off was simple, with no hassle. A four-day rental for a Chevy Tracker SUV totaled to 8,800 Filipino pesos or around 150 US dollars. But since I ended up getting a sedan, it was 700 pesos, or $13 less. The car was nice, clean, and looked well kept, and we had no issues during our rental period. So I would recommend this place to anyone interested in renting a vehicle. For more information, you can visit carforrentalbuy.com. For lodging, I booked an Airbnb. This place was nice. It had two beds, plenty of room, a TV, and a refrigerator with snacks and drinks for an additional price. Our room was on the second floor, but there is also a room with a balcony above us. I wanted to book that room so I can launch my drone, but unfortunately, 
it wasn't available during our visit. Rosemary's place cost $108 for four days, so expect to pay around that price more or less depending on the property. There are also hotels, motels, and resorts around the city. This symmetrical behemoth has an estimated age of 14,000 to 52,000 years. Its first recorded eruption was in 1616 and has erupted more than 50 times in over 500 years. It is renowned for its perfect cone because of its symmetrical conical shape. The height of this giant reaches to 8,081 feet and can be viewed as far as San Andres most of the year. However, it is quite elusive during the rainy season when clouds and mist blanket this titan from its inhabitants. I would rank Mayon as a hidden gem of the Philippines as its coastal paradise usually overshadow its volcanic and mountainous counterparts. If you're visiting the country, this is a must visit. Because of its proximity to Mayon, hopping on an ATV and exploring through the volcanic landscape is a must experience. The drive takes you to rough trails through riverbeds, jungles, small villages, slopes and hardened lava rocks from previous eruptions. I booked a tour with Mayan SkyDrive. It costs 65 US dollars per person, but will depend on which route you take. I wanted to go to all three trails, which are the Black Lava, Green Lava, and the Mayan Lava Trail. But unfortunately, the only one open at the time of my visit was the Green Trail. The other two were closed off due to volcanic activity. The meetup point is right next to the Kagsawa ruins. You can find more information on bookings in the description below. This tour is well worth the admission. The Philippines doesn't just have coastal beaches and paradise, but also feature many breathtaking mountainous landscapes and scenery worth a visit. These ruins are all that remain of the Kagsawa Church, a once proud symbol of the town's faith and community. Built in 1724 by Franciscan friars, the church stood as a beacon of hope and worship for nearly a century. Up until February 1st, 1914, when Mayon volcano erupted with unprecedented fury. Ash and lava spewed from its crater engulfing the surrounding villages in a catastrophic display of nature's raw power. The eruption buried the town of Kagsawa under volcanic debris. The church, once a place of refuge for those seeking safety, became a tomb for many. Over a thousand lives were lost in the disaster. Today, the Kagsawa ruins stand as a haunting testament to that tragic day. The belfry, partially buried in volcanic rock, is all that remains of the once majestic church. It is a symbol of both loss and survival, a reminder of the forces that shape our world. One can visit these ruins, enjoy the scenery, while trying some of the region's specialty dish, 
A monument of two chili peppers can be seen at a distance that symbolizes what Bicol is known for. So be sure to try its local delicacies that has this ingredient, such as Be Cool Express. It's a bit spicy, but it was delicious and savory. While it is relatively safe to visit this titan of Bicol, it is however still an active volcano and parts of it is restricted when activity intensifies. Entrance fees are 20 for adults, 15 for kids and 30 pesos for parking. to the adrenaline-filled adventures, Sum Lang Lake is a serene and scenic spot where visitors can paddle bamboo rafts and enjoy a peaceful view of Mayon Volcano. It's located in the municipality of Kamalig, west of Legazpi, about 14 kilometers away. Once an overgrown, neglected area, the lake was transformed through the combined efforts of the local community and government. Kayaking, paddleboarding and nature walks are just a few of the activities that visitors can enjoy here. And for those looking to simply unwind, the lake's calm atmosphere provides the perfect setting for relaxation. The entrance fee are 100 for adults, 90 for seniors, and 60 for children. Parking is 10 for motorbikes and 20 for cars with an environmental fee of 20 pesos. What was once an eyesore is now a thriving ecotourism destination showcasing the natural beauty of the Bicol region. It's a popular spot for both foreigners and locals alike. Four kilometers away south of Sumlang Lake is Quituinan Hill. This majestic viewpoint is an open space ranch ideal for picnics and campsites. If you are renting a car, this is a nice spot to camp for the night on top of a slope. Activities to do here are go on an ATV tour, horseback riding, hiking, and see some of the farm animals on the ranch. This place is pet friendly, senior accessible. There are cabins available, as well as toilets, showers, and running water. Next time I'm in the area, this would be a place I would stay. The views are just incredible. To car camp here is 100 pesos a night. You can find more information at campsites.ph or check the description. Unfortunately, since it was the rainy season, rolling thunderstorms kept on coming throughout the day. A Mayon was hidden during most of our visit. While the rain can get severe at times, luckily they don't last that long. I personally love the rain, so this is my kind of weather. Short bursts of sporadic rainfall that last only a few hours. Mild heat and humidity with overcast weather and a hint of sunshine. I'd take this kind of weather over sunny any day. Just south of Legazpi is Highlands Park, which is situated on top of a mountain.
It is an amusement park and recreational area that includes an area with street food and art installations with a stunning view of Mount Mayon. On certain nights, visitors can enjoy live music. We ended up eating here a second time for lunch since one of my tita joined us in Legazpi. The food here was delicious, but I was still full from before, so I didn't eat much. There was this dog that befriended us, so we gave him our leftovers. Street dogs are quite common in the Philippines, and each time I saw one, I really wished I brought Kyoto with me. The entrance fee are 50 for adults, 40 for senior citizens, and 30 pesos for kids under 11. The park is open daily from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m., with weekend being the busiest. It's family friendly, it has a nice view, with delicious food, and also a great spot to launch your drone. We only stayed here for a couple of hours, mainly to get food before heading back to our Airbnb. This place is great if you're only staying within the city and are looking for good food with a view of Mayon. North of the city is the giant statue of Nuestra Señora de Salvación. This 49 feet tall monument depicts the Virgin carrying the Christ child in her left arm, while her right grasps a man by the wrist as he is about to fall into a gaping hellmouth. An angel kneels at the foot of the Virgin, offering a basket of burning hearts to Christ, who holds one in his right hand, while his left is stretched in a gesture of accepting the offering. If you go out of your way to seek out large monuments, statues and complexes when you travel, be sure to visit this one while in Legazpi 